Right. Hi everyone, I'm Fran. This is my first time tonight on Live with Prima. I'm very excited to be showing you what we're going to make this evening. Let me just hold up to the camera. You can see that okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is like a little um, journaling album. In a notepad in it. So I've used two pieces of the Julie Nutting um, banner, uh, the chipboard banner to make this and just put um, little jump rings through the top. Hi. So, yep, can you see that all right? Yep, a little bit closer. Can you go too close? Is that good? Hi Sharon! Awesome. Yes, I'm in the UK, as <laughs> you may be able to tell from my accent. <laughs> Uh, Derbyshire, if you know where that is. You're going to get started soon, Sharon, is that okay? Oh, <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, someone that's nearby. <laughs> That's very exciting. That's fab. Okay, great. So, just another quick recap of my little album. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get started. I'll just show you some of the products that I've used for it. So, I'll just pop that to one side. So I've basically created my little notebook album out of the Julie Nutting um, chipboard banner set. The item is 91171. So I've just used two pieces of the, the, scall the scalloped um, banner for that. So that we've used that. I'm going to also be using these very cool um, thread letters. Can you see those? Yeah, yeah, that's a bit better. From the Bloom collection. So that is item 980498. And I'm also using some cool stencils as well. I'll read those numbers out to you when I um when I start with those. Right. They are awesome letters, I love them. They're very, very fun to play with. Right, so I'm just going to pop that out of the way. Right, so I'm going to start moving the camera down if that's alright. So, face yourselves, people. Is that all okay? Can everybody see that alright? that okay? Yep, looks good. Right, so firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my chipboard banner. I've already pre-done the back, the backing one as you can see, just to speed up some time, so I'm just going to do the top Okay, right. What should we start with? Alright, so first of all, I'm going to use um, some chalkboard paint. Yep, can you see that one in, I just find the colour, eggshell. And that is item number 577162. So we're going to start with, start with that. If I can get another. 
Right, so I'm just going to blob some onto this piece of paper. Ooh. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to use um, a brayer, a very ancient brayer. I'm just going to layer it up with the paint. And then I'm going to start applying that to my chipboard banner. My very old, creaky brayer, that is. So I'm not wanting a really thick, perfect coat for this at the minute because I'm just going to start layering different coloured paints over it. So it's just a quick whiz over. A bit more of one. This is really fun as well. Right, so I've got another piece of paper and now I'm going to add some more chalkboard paint. This one is sand, item number 577148. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pour some onto some paper. You could obviously use your craft mat and then wipe it, but the ease I'm just using pieces of paper tonight. Right. So I'm going to go over with the sand. You can see we get starting to get that nice mottled effect. I don't know if you can see that. Right. Next, I'm going to use another chalkboard paint on the top, and this one is the golden colour and item number is 577124 so lovely gorgeous bright I'm just going to put that on top of the, the same colour on the paper again load my brayer up Go over everything. I'm sorry if you can hear the squeaking of this sprayer. I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> like an antique brew. <laughs> it seems to be paint on it. Okay, going over. Right. So, I'm just going to move that to one side. Right, so I'll just hold that up so you can see what effect we've got there. It's like nice mottled, quite subtle, like nice mottled effect there. I'm using the three chalk colours with the brayer. Right, so I'm going to fire my heat gun up, so apologies for any noise. I'm just going to give it a quick dry, okay?
my okay. Yes, that is a good point. Oil in my bra <laughs> oil in my brayer. Yes, that's gonna definitely be on my to-do list. Right. So next, um what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the chalk paints back again. Hey up me duck, oh how exciting somebody said it. <laughs> that's really made it my evening. That is funny. Sorry if no one knows what, what I'm talking about at all. Forgive me for my accent. Right, so chalkboard paints back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the um, dual blue. You see that? Whoop. Chalkboard paint item 577223. Right, and I'm going to get my palette knife, or you can use a brush or whatever you want, really. Gonna get quite a bit on there, and I'm just gonna start splatting it. Now, you have to do this with a bit of force because obviously, obviously, paint is quite thick. It's not ink, so just give it some, give it some well. Don't wear clean clothes when you do this. Right, that's not too bad. Just clean my knife. Did the work right? I'm just clean this up so I don't mess everything up. Yes, it's a very big palette knife. It's clean, nice and clean, so it's new. <laughs> Right, so next I'm going to use the um, the go yeah, golden uh, chalk wall paint 577124. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Grizzle it, splat it, squash it. So you can see what's going on there. Yep, good. Clean my knife. And I'm going to go over with the, the sand chalkboard paint. I love these chalkboard paints, they are really lovely paints. So again, Of splodging. If you're feeling ambitious, you could even pipe it on. That could be quite fun with an icing bag. Use for cakes. Get a more uniform effect then. Right, I think that's good. Sorry, I just need to some extra something. That was one downside of splashing around the paint. Right, okay. So, next. Time for some drying, so excuse the noise.
Sorry. I'm afraid my heat tool is unavoidable with this project. So I do apologise. Yeah, everything's squeaky today. <laughs> my heat gun squeaky, my brain is squeaky. We've yet to find out if anything else will be squeaky this evening. I'm hoping not. Right, so, so you can see there now we've got a really cool paint splat effect there. I would recommend if you do do try this technique to just um, let it dry naturally but obviously for the purposes of this we have to have the noisy heat pump. So, right, so I'm going to just put that to one side and next I'm going to get, now this is just a piece of scrap denim that I've die cut into a circle. Okay. So I'm going to use this tool stencil, let's just find the number, it's uh, from the Bloom Collection and it circles item number 980429. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, middle, sorry, the middle size circle for this and I'm just going to pop it over my denim circle and then I'm going to get some that way around, some uh, opaque matte modelling paste from the Art Basics range and that is item number 961411. Right, so my palette knife and I'm just going to Just start going right on top of my denim with the modelling paste. I'm just holding it down in the middle of the stencil just so I can spread the paste outwards. Right, so next I'm going to peel it away ever so gently. I'll just go around this way. Take the breath. So there, you can I'll just hold part of it up. You can just see that. On denim, so it's really cool using um, paste and things on fabrics. It's just really cool effect. And I'm afraid this is more heat gun. <laughs> All right. Thank you. 
An alien tool. Oh dear. <laughs> Doesn't seem that bad when I'm using it, but there we are. So now I have got my dried off denim circle. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. And next. Alright, so next I've got um, another large circle that I've die cut just out of um, thick card. And I have got an old bathroom tile there. Right, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use this uh, Art Basics 3D Gloss Gel, item number 961381. Okay, so this is the um yeah the gloss one. Yeah, that's true. It's a heat gun. It's giving me much amusement this evening. Right. So I'm gonna pop some of a gloss gel onto my tile. This is my mixing tile. And I've got some uh, mica powder, the new mica powder from Art Ingredients. Um, I'll give you the item number, which is 962494. I keep getting the wrong way around. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to pop, sprinkle some onto my gel. I think we'll be enough for that. And then we're just going to spread and mix it in. This is just really fun to do. You could also mix some of the chalk paints into the gels as well. Obviously, the, the mica gives it a nice shimmer. So, you see that there? Yep. So it's like a beautiful pale blue at the minute. Right, so the mask comes back again. I'm, I'm going to use the, the large one this time. I'm just going to pop, pop that into the middle, roughly into the middle. Hold down with my finger. I'm just going to do the same thing as we did before on the denim. And just spreading out with slowly. Yeah, the market power is beautiful. I can't work out if my favourite's the blue or the teal. So, spread, spread it around. And then I'm just going to gently lift the stencil so you can see what we've got going on there, which looks so so nice. The stencils really are awesome, I think they're fabulous. Right. So, unfortunately, the alien heat gun comes back on again, I'm afraid.
I should have the text to talk over the alien heat gun, so I'll just let it go do its thing. Right. Do that. Is what we have going on? Can you see that? Yep. Right. Yes, it does go darker after you've heated it um, when you mix it with the gels. So always bear that in mind when you're mixing your own. If you want light, you're not going to need much powder at all because it does darken quite a bit when you dry it up. Right, okay. So next, I'm going to use... Um, some watercolour pencil. These are new, you can see that, yep, new Prima watercolour pencils, and these are absolutely fabulous. They are my favourite thing at the minute. I'm just using the plaggies on everything. So, this um, particular box is the basics, and that is item number 576714. Okay. So, these are fabulous. I'm also going to use this Prima uh, watercolour brush as well. Um, I don't have an item on me at the minute. It is on the bottom. Yes, you should. They are honestly, I love them. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. Um, so I'm going with the yellow first, and I'm just going to start. Just. Colouring next to the lines in the stencil. So I'm not going to meet with this. So it's purely for highlighting. It's quite nice just to switch off and just go around the circle just quite easily with the pencil. So easy that you'll see it's pretty effective. I'm just going out slightly on the outer edge as well. Well, you can just do do what you want with this, but it's quite a nice technique. They are really, really beautiful pencils to use, so I'm just looking. My new favourite. Right. So you can see, I hope, maybe not, it's quite pale.
Okay, so I'm going to use um, another set which is called Scenic Root, and the item for that is five seven double six nine one. So I'm just going to take a nice teal colour, and then on the opposite side, because I've gone round with a buttery yellow, I'm just going to do the opposite side of the lines quickly. So just a quick sweep down. So you've not really any need to be particularly neat with it. Are we all okay? Real good still. Right. So next up is my watercolor pen. Now these are. This is really, really, really cool. So I'm just going to give it a little squeeze, you see, when the water comes out. So I'm just going to brush that over the pencil lines, just really quick sweeps. And just start blending. I'm just really highlighting the the mica mask masking that we've done. It is awesome, I can tell you. I love it. This is the pencils I'm just use on nearly everything at the moment. So easy to use and it works so so well. So you can see I'm not being particularly neat with this. Just literally running it up and down the little grooves in the circle. Absolutely. Everyone needs one. It, they are fab. Right, so just right, I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. Can you see? I'll hold it a bit nearer. It's a little bit hard to see in the light, but basically, we've just gone around all these little uh, lines and just highlighted it. Okay? Right. So that is that big large circle done. I'm going to pop the lid on my pen. And next step is. Now, next up, I am going to use some of the um, Shabby Sheep Treasures. Um, these are cute little frames, they are absolutely gorgeous. The item number is 892128. So we're going to use this 
into our rotary instruction. Right. So we're going back to the golden chalkboard paint. And we're just going to give this a quick coat of paint. So I'm going to do it relatively lightly. I don't want it really, I don't want a really heavy coat on it. I'm just going to go around the edge very quickly. Getting the message going just along the way. Quick going inside. Alright. Yep, I'm still here. It's just the, um, on top of the paint jar, it's just the, um, like polystyrene seal. Thing. So that's what that is that are on the on top of the paint. Right. So next, I'm just using some um, clear embossing paste, uh, powder. Sorry, clear embossing powder. I'm just going to sprinkle this over my wet paint. Okay. So it all looks frosted now. Pop that there. And I'm afraid it's even time. I heat to a lot of the services. I'm not messy at all. I'm a perfectly tidy scrapper. Right, so I've just um, put clear embossing powder on this. It is quite hot now. Um, and it's just giving it a lovely um, kind of glossy effect. And it's good because you can see where I've not painted it really deeply through the on the details of it. I don't know if you can see it very well. Really. Ah, there. Look, we you won't be able to see the gloss, but you can see what's going on there. Okay. Right. So next, in the um the chipboard banner pack, um there are these little scallops. Um, and what we're going to do is I've already pre. I've pre-painted and decorated the top um, strip, and I'm just going to do I'm just going to do the lower strip now. So I'm going to hack into this with my scissors. 
So I'm just snipping off to end. Okay. And I'm going to get the blue, the dual blue um, chalkboard paint for this. I'm just going to have to brush a quick one. And we're just going to paint the really cool strips. Really good as a dial. So, quick coat of paint. Great coverage as well with this chalkboard paint. Okay, that's really quick and easy. The chalkboard paint dries really quickly, even if you just let it dry naturally. Obviously, the thicker you put it on, the more. Uh, the longer it's going to take, but just like a standard, um, relatively thin coat, it doesn't take hardly any time to dry at all. So I'm just going to put my heat gun on again. It does, it does cover really, really well. So you can see that is, it's perfect, really. Great stuff. Right. So I am going to use, um, this Bloom stencil from the Bloom collection. It's Spark. The name of it's Spark. And it's item number 980399. Okay. This is really cool stencil. So it's like a really nice lattice. I would say the best description for it is. So I'm just going to pop that over my little chipboard. <laughs> yeah, the heat gun again. The alien heat gun, because it's now Christmas. So I'm going to be um, putting the mo mo opaque modelling paste through the stencil with my palette knife so Tapping off the excess paste, and you see what we've got there. Looks fab against the blue. I should just move out the way. Right, so unfortunately the squeal and heat gun goes on again. So that is nice and dry. So I'm just going to pop that to one side and mix. We have got right. So this is um 
the howling heat gun. Yeah, no one likes that tonight, do they? <laughs> I think I need to bin that by the end of the evening. Um, anyway, um, this is some of fish scale uh, resist canvas. The item number is on the Prima blog and on my blog. But I've just cut a strip and I've just cut the, um, the little scallops out at the bottom. And I'm going to get my watercolours out again. Yeah, it, it's a really, really nice effect just using the chalkboard and the uh, chalkboard paint and this stencil. It's really, really cool. Right. So I'm just see that. Right, so I'm going to pick a uh, blue and a uh, blue out the scenic root pencil tin and a pink I'm going to go with a navy as well. Right, so what I'm going to do is, you see I'm just brushing the pencil over the tip of my pencil and then we're just going onto the canvas with this. As you can see, these chalk, these pencils, you can just use them for anything. No fab. So, I want a kind of um, ombre style effect, really. So, I'm going to go in with a bit more colour. So, I'm going to go with some, uh, some pink here and there. And it's going to start going purple here for me. I'm going to get some tissue paper and just block that. So, if you guys can see, kind of see that. Little ombre going on there. So, so I'm just going to leave that there to dry so that should be hopefully okay to stick down soon. So, so what we're doing this is like basically lots of watercolour in the embellishments now is basically the next step. So I'm going in with these blue Red letters item number nine eight zero four nine eight. So they say create at the minute. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the A or And the T. There's the art there. So more. Let's see what we're going to go for. More watercolour. So I'm using the blue from the basics collection on this A. Get some water going on there. I'm basically just going to paint over the red letters. There's a bit of pink going on there. Yes, I think you've got to think outside the box with your uh, letters.
if anyone can tell me what to spell with two C's and four E's, then please feel free to let me know. What's your challenge for the evening? Two C's. <laughs> Clean suggestions only, but I'll be. I don't want any distraction. Right. So, can you see? I'll hold that up real close. So, now I've got a gorgeous watercoloured A going on there. So, basically, I'm just going to do all of them like this. And this is just with three pencils that I'm going to create it as if I. And the watercolour brush. Actually, I'm going to go in with a purple. Oh, they're a bit fiddly to get on. I'll have to tip them all out. Excuse me. A purple from the basics range. So you can see, I'm going to put a bit of that onto the R as well. That's good, I've got no T though. <laughs> that could have worked, but there's no T. Four, it gives me four E's and one and two C's. Yeah, that's right. Big conundrums for me, even. Will anyone be able to solve this? There's some interesting suggestions going on there. A little bit of boot. You can also just rub the pencil directly onto the letters or whatever you want to put, and then just blend with your watercolour brush. So you see, I'll hold that up a bit closer. Right, so I'll get quite a thing to do with the T's. I think the paper blues. So I'm just going to do this one. It's going directly onto the letter. You can also wet the end of the pencil as well and then rub that onto the letters or whatever you're colouring in. I've got no... it doesn't really look like a U. I don't think I could get a wet... well... I could put two, the two... I could put the two C's together then it would be a giant O or zero, but I don't know if that's going to help matters any really. Cart would be good, but I've not got an A or a T. <laughs> I've just literally got two, two C's and four E's. Okay, right. So that is my T. So it's a nice ombre blue going on there. So I am unfortunately going to wheel the heat gun out again just to dry these off a little bit because they're damp from the water from the watercolour brush. So brace yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bye, Karen. Right. Oh. So, I'm going to move those to one side. And next, I'm going to get some in bellies. Right. So, first of all, I'm starting off with um, these are uh, Rodanthe seashell flowers, I believe. Now, these are an ultimate favourite of mine. I love, love, love these. Item number five, treble seven, double six. Okay. So, five. Right. So, I am going to miss this with some colour bloom. I'm going with the cobalt item number five seven three eight nine eight. Okay, so let's get my mic again. That's it, you can be my helper. <laughs> you can pass me things. Right, so just gonna go in there one spritz of the cobalt, literally one spritz. And in here, I've just got some water. And then I'm just going to spritz over my flower with a bit of water. So it just starts again. You get, in, get that lovely water full effect. And just from the um, excess on the mat, I can just tap that on the edges or just to make it look a bit darker in places. So you can see. Again, we've got a gorgeous ombre flower. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've got a few um, flowers that I'm going to do, so I'm just going to dry them all at once. So we'll just leave that one to one side. Um, and next, I'm going to be using. I can't see the name of these ones, um, but. The item number is five double seven double six seven. Okay. So the info will be on the Prima blog or my blog. And I'm just going to take one of those. I'm just going to pull the back in off. So I don't really want any green on it. Just open that out a bit. And I'm going to give this a spritz with some bright colour bloom in pressed petal. The item number is 573881. Ah, thank you, Sean. Shake. Oh. Give me mic again. And then we're just going to go in, give that a spray. And on this one, I'm just going to put um, some more cobalt on it, just because I want a slightly more darker effect on that one. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I don't. I normally remove the greens when I'm sitting on top of my flowers. So just going in with a bit more of the pressed petal. Okay, so you can see again we've got a lovely mottled purple, bluey purple flowers there. Right, so I'm just going to dry off these two flowers. I'm afraid. So just going to put them to one side and the last 
anything to be watercoloured is I have got a little um, feather. So you can just see that it's just a plain um, cream feather. I'm just going to get a watercolour brush. Just going to do this really, really quick. So you can see how versatile these pencils are. I just wanted to just show you how you can do so many different things with them. So this is going to dry really quickly, so happily I won't need to use the heat one. I don't know if you can see it yet. Maybe just about there. It is really subtle because I don't want to, uh, I didn't want that one too dark, but I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. Just Okay. Right, I think that's good. I'll just move the pencils out of there. Somewhere. Right, so next we are going back to the um the chipboard frame. The chipboard banner, sorry, okay. um, and I'm just going to start uh, compiling everything and just sticking it together. Right, right so first I'm going to start with the, the circle that we um, that we put the mic and the 3D gloss gel onto. So. That's just going to go in the middle. Actually, I should have stuck this down. Luckily, I've not stuck it right down to the edge. I normally don't do so. I can just poke things in and around and underneath. So I'm just going to pop this little scallop just slightly underneath. Hold that there. Well, that's a comforting comment. <laughs> it's all gone wrong. I forgot to press the wrong button. Um, yeah. So, what am I doing now? Okay, so we're going to stick the um, the denim circle on the top, okay? So I'm just using um, fabric tack to stick everything down with. So you can see I've just um, doodled on to this piece with um, a a white a white water based pen basically so that's just giving it a nice pattern as you can see as well I will be using that to just doodle around bits and bobs as well on the on the album cover okay. This is a fun part when you can all start sticking it and it all starts coming together. As far as I'm aware, I did press record. So fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm just going to start, um, I'm going to snip this. Resist canvas into that we watercolored earlier. And just pop some more on that. So I'm just going to tuck that underneath the circle somewhat. I 
I want to come around and press the button. <laughs> Good. Can we stick in and down slightly offset from each other? You can see. I'm just going to trim the excess once it's dried off. Right. So I have also got um scrap of denim. So this is just um basically off an old pair of jeans which is just great to use for um your crafting and I've just cut the um the seam one of the seam parts to it. So you're just gonna and I've also roughed the edges up so it's giving it a nice textured effect. I'm just going to put bits of denim just underneath. Give it this canvas. And I think the denim works so well with the bright um, yellow chalkboard paint as well. Yes, everybody was panicking. <laughs> right, so again, you see we're taking shape there. Move another frame. So next, I'm going to stick down the um, the frame. Oh, that's my other frame. So I'm just going to stick that in the middle of the denim. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do. Back to the 3D gloss gel. I'm just going to take a little bit of the gel. I'm just blobbing that in the middle of the frame. Just moving it around, spreading it around. Probably about a two millimetre layer going in there. And I'm just spreading with the end of my paintbrush, moving the brush. So I'm just going to use some of the um, art ingredients, glass beads, the turquoise ones. Item number six nine two six seven eight. So I'm just going to sprinkle these on with my fingers. I'm not going to tip them in because we will have a disaster and they'll go everywhere. So just a bit of a sprinkling in there and I'm just going to tap them down just so they adhere to 3D gloss gel. So I'm just going to set this very quickly with the heat gun. Yeah, they have got um, holes in the um, the glass beads. Obviously, the micro beads are really tiny and they don't have any holes in. So, if that answers your question, hopefully. Right, so the beads are in, the beads are dried. So, we'll just continue just layering up our embellishments now. So, we're going back to the art thread letters. So, a little bit of glue, a little bit more there as well. So I'm just going to stick that 
on the outer edge. So our little um, feather that we've watercolored is just going to go on top of the frame under the R. So just a couple of blobs of glue on that. Pop that down so if we could stick it okay. We all okay. We're all doing well. Fine, my tea goes on. Okay. On the original, they've actually put some um, thread under the A and the T, but obviously I've not got time to do that today, but that's another thing you can do as well. Right, so we're going to start popping some flowers on. I'll just snip that. I should have done that before. Let's see. So my final flowers that are going on are the uh, Jodie Lee. They are, I think they're called Prince Charming. Um, the item, yeah, Prince, from Prince, the Princess Ray Prince Charming. The item number is 574376. So you can see those, these are awesome because they look like they've got white paint flaps on and they look perfect. They go perfectly with this project. So. We're going to use the, can you see that, oops, no, not really. Hopefully, yeah, nice orangey colour. Then we get a couple of those. And I'm just going to pop um, some, say it in crystals, this is from the Timeless Memories uh, collection, item number 579. Four zero one. So these ones with the fish scale um, patterns on, and these are absolutely beautiful. And of course, they match the fish scale canvas with this canvas that we've put on as well. So these are looking bad. What colour should I have? You can never have too many prima flowers ever. That is true. Right, so I think we'll have one there. And yeah, one there. Put a bit more glue on. The colours are so fab with this as well, they're like really bright and springy and fresh and vibrant. Bye! Who enjoyed it? That's 
two. All right. So you can see we are pretty much nearly done. I just want to um, just go it actually as well. I did on my original album. I've just got some um, wool here. And I'm just starting to frizz it up and uncoil it a bit. You can use cotton if you want. I just thought I really like the colour of this gorgeous teal. I think it matches. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tuck that in under the flower. And under the flower somewhere, I think, just for extra texture. So this is um, just a standard um, white fine liner pen um, that I'm just going to I'm just going to go and highlight some of the um, the paint splodges that we did earlier on. If you can do this, it just really makes a difference. It really makes things pop and stand out, and it looks really cool. I'm just going to do a few just to show you the effect. Maybe you won't be able to see too well from there. I'll just hold it up. And also, you can just doodle as well. You're getting a bit of a graffiti effect there if you just start doodling random things as well. Which I like. So I just hold that up. <laughs> yeah, you can see some of the doodling that I've just done there with the white pen. Right, very near the end now. But you're all still okay. So I'm just going over with um, one of the pink watercolour uh, pencils and I'm just going to highlight some of the uh, stencil detailing that we did. Actually, I'm just going to highlight various things, so I'm just going to go over a bit with, on the flowers. Thank you. So we just add a little bit of interest to things, I think. I'm just doing them randomly and I'm just doing the edge a little bit as well. And then I'm just going to go around little patches so you can I don't know if you can see that actually. Just around the edges, I'm just going around with the, uh, the pink pen, uh, the pink pencil, and the watercolour brush. I'm just giving it a bit more dimension and a bit of colour, or should I say more colour to it? Right. Thank you. So you can see there what we've got going on and with this you can also um, put the the stencil the uh, trellis well it's called spark but it's the lattice stencil on the top of that as well over the top okay so 
this is a I've already said pre-done on the back and this has got a um a notepad in it so you could use any notepad and if you've got a proper dial just make your holes um in the appropriate place at the top and then hopefully this will thread through and then we're done get through there Yeah, this is a little bit awkward. So, there we have it. So everyone can see that. The uh, the doodling detail we've got going on, some of the highlighting with the pink pencil. And then you can use that for your journaling or ideas. This is what I'm going to use mine for, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Sharon. I will do. Thank you. Any questions? Are we all good? Thank you very much. Thanks, Judy. Right, so I shall just pan up. You can see me just now. Yep, just a bit more. I'm still here. Right, so I hope you enjoyed um hope you enjoyed the class. Um and yeah, if there's any questions, as I say, Sharon's still there to answer them. Um so yeah. Just one mini announcement I've got for you. Um Thursday's next live with Prima is on April the ninth, so yes, Thursday. It's nine thirty EST time or eight thirty central time and that's for Delaney's easel cards, so please feel free to go on the blog or um, the Live with Prima the Facebook page to see those. They're absolutely gorgeous and very, very cute. So I'm sure that'll be a really fun show to um, to see. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Right. So I shall. I shall be off very soon. Okay. Thanks a lot then. See ya.